Hi, and welcome to the latest installment of According to Pete. Today we're going to talk about stupid soldering tricks for the surface mount challenged. The reason I want to attack this is because uh, surface mount technology is prevalent everywhere, right? But everybody kind of hangs back about like, I don't know if I can solder that myself or, you know, without reflow of it and then that. You can, okay? Uh, and I want to show you some of the tricks that I've learned in the past as to how to do this. So let's check that out. Okay, so tools. Let's talk about tools first. You have to ask yourself, are you a lifer? Okay? Because if you are a lifer, don't mess with the $3 side cutters, okay? Don't mess with the $10 soldering iron. It's just gonna burn you in ways that you didn't predict, and you're gonna end up with a not so good result. So um, go with the good tools, and I'll show you some of those as we go. Uh, the second thing I wanna make perfectly clear, I don't use hot air. Now, that's not because I hate, okay, it is because I hate hot air, but it's, it's also because I never got good enough with it. Um, I have seen some of our guys, and a lot of guys, get really good with hot air. They don't burn boards, they don't blow off other components, but for me it's like, and I'm just like hosing stuff everywhere. So uh, I learned how to do it with an iron and soldering wick and all the things that I'll show you. To start with, I have a good tweezers. These are VOMM, V-O-M-M, -M, from Germany. I can't remember where I got these. These are ESD. Uh, I don't use the curved tip. I like the uh, straight tip, but a good set of tweezers is a must. Next up, an X-Acto. Why would you need an X-Acto? I'm gonna show you that. Uh, third thing, you probably will want a side cutter of some kind. This is one off of our storefront. They're, they're much better than the $3 ones. They cut really well, and these jaws survive for some time. Again, don't mess with the bad tools. Next thing you might need is a pick. Sometimes you might have a pin or something that's not cooperating with you. It really does become an invaluable tool for places that you can't really predict. Uh, I love my butane irons. This one is relatively cheap. Uh, it makes for a lot of heat in a small space, and it also has this little gap here, and I'm sure this is for ignition purposes, right? But when this thing starts burning, it's also really great for shrink wrap. So I don't have to have hot air. My main iron, I use this guy, which is uh, the Hakko FX888 that we sell on our storefront. I would rather have a bigger tip and wick off the excess solder because it transfers a lot of heat and it, it ensures a better connection. Every time I use a tiny tip, uh, they tend to get bent, they tend to get eaten, they don't transfer much heat, and all of my solder giant joints look like words I can't say on this video. My board vise. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can hold a PCB, but you're gonna have to hold it. But even if you don't have one of those, you know, worst case scenario, hold the thing down with your solder. That, that's lead, that'll hold. <laughs> I use leaded solder. It flows better, I like it better. Um, but you can use this to hold your PCB down, you hold your work down, otherwise you're gonna look like a clown chasing his hat around a ring. Okay, so we're gonna start off with an 0603 component, very basic, very simple. Just so you guys know, we've got our second camera here so that you can get like the up close and personal view of the componentry. To start, solder is your friend. So you take off the component, basically with a big blob of solder on your iron, and you just go and you take it all off. and then you remove the extra solder, and you just take it off with a little solder wick. Clean! So now, I've got another component just waiting to go down. So here's what you do. You blob it something there on one pad. You grab with your tweezers, so you line that guy up. And then you hit it with the other side. And you wanna be careful because obviously it doesn't take very much heat to let this thing wander and wander it will if you get it too hot. Next up is a SOT 23.5 package, which is very typical for like small LDOs, uh, voltage regulator. Same kind of thing as I did before. Apply a bunch of heat. And off it goes. And then grab your solder wick, give your tip a little clean, and there you go. Nice clean footprint ready to go to replace it with some arbitrary SOT 23.5 package. You pick the pin that's closest to you, give it a little extra solder on it, because that's gonna be your anchor pin. And then I will immediately 
go to the opposite side and get those guys. And that's how you replace a SOT 23.5. Next up is uh, a SOIC part. This is a 16. A SOIC part, you could actually pull it up a pin at a time, but it's a pain. You stand the chance of pulling up a pad. Not so good. So as long as you assume that you're gonna have to replace parts, you can start by cutting the pins off. When you're doing prototype work of any kind, you buy extra parts, okay? You're gonna wreck stuff. Assume that you're going to, in fact. Starting to come free. Ta-da! Okay. And then the next part of that is you go through with the iron and you take all those pins off. So we've cleaned off our pads and we're ready to replace a part. Now I couldn't find a SOIC 16, but I got a SOIC 8 to start with, just like we did before. We are going to choose a pin on which to anchor. And then we go to the opposite side and we start hitting them. So there you go. All the pins are down and we have replaced that part in record time. Now, another component that I will do with this is uh, a T-SOT part. Now, the reason I want to do this with a T-SOT part is I want to show you how to solder those pins with a big old iron tip that doesn't really lend itself to fine pitch stuff. This component, as you can probably see from the other angle here, is in kind of a tight spot. After that, just like the other guys, you hit this with some solder wick. So now, it is very loosely tacked. In fact, it may come loose at any moment. I'm gonna hit it basically anywhere I can get it because the space is so restricted in here. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gob up these pins with solder really, really well, and then I'm gonna hit it with solder wick to take off the excess. Now, to back this up, if I wasn't doing a video here, I would be having a magnifier and I would be looking to see you know, where I had bridges. And if I did have bridges, that's where this guy comes in, because you can carve out lead pretty easily with a pick. So that's where we're gonna stop. Um, now, little note, um, if you get up to like QFN parts, I was pretty sure I was gonna be able to do that. Turns out I couldn't get enough heat onto the component in order to lift it. I have used it uh, for surface mount crystals, but in my efforts to remove some, some other QFN parts, I can't get enough heat on the component to actually get it to come up. So if you're gonna go with QFN, you just about gotta do it with hot air. Um, you may have another method. If you do, put it in the comment section. We would love to hear it. Uh, and that's where we're gonna call it today. So thanks for hanging. Um, if you have any questions or comments or ideas for more videos, please put them in the comment section below. And that's all from me today. See you next time, bye.